In the last video, we went into detail on what GraphQL Nexus is and how it can be a better workflow than the legacy models of GraphQL. Um, starting with this video, we're going to run through an example Prisma Nexus implementation um, by going through the recommended steps for generating a GraphQL server. Uh, we're going to start off by defining our Prisma data model. Um, and then once we do this, we're going to go ahead and do the auto-generated piece, at least for this video. Um, so the first thing that we'll do is you're going to go to the Prisma examples GitHub page. Um, that's at github.com slash prisma slash prisma examples. And you're going to go ahead and download this repository. There's one example that we're going to use here as kind of like our boilerplate. So over here on the right, um, click on clone or download and just copy this guy. And now we're going to go to a terminal. Um, in my case, I'm going to use um, the VS Code integrated terminal. And in your main uh, development project directory, just type in git clone and then um, that URL and then hit enter. That's going to install um, all the Prisma example repositories. Um, for this example, we're going to use a particular example. Um, navigate into the TypeScript. Let's see, it's, no, not that one, sorry. CD into Prisma slash examples. And then you should uh, navigate into TypeScript. And then navigate to GraphQL Apollo server. Um, once you get in there, let's go ahead and install the dependencies. Um, so just everything is already defined in package.json. Um, and let me go ahead and uh, open it up in VS Code so we can get a better illustration. Um, so in VS Code, assuming that you're using this, go to File, Add Folder to Workspace, and then just find, um, find this GraphQL Apollo server uh, in your uh, browse. So um, in my example, I'll go to desktop, dev, and then uh, I should look for Prisma examples here, and then click on TypeScript, and then GraphQL Apollo server, and click add. And this is going to add the directory structure here. Um, so if we open up package.json, um, we can see the dependencies here with Apollo server, uh, GraphQL, Nexus, Nexus Prisma, and the Prisma client library. And then we've got some nice types here too, um, which is really, really helpful in, in developing with GraphQL Nexus. Um, so we're just going to leave this boilerplate as is. In our, uh, back in our console, we are going to do a few things. So um, the first thing that we'll do is go ahead and install all the dependencies by either, if you're using yarn, just type in yarn. If you're using npm, do npm install. Um, so I'll just, I'm using yarn, so I'll just type in yarn. And that'll install all the dependencies. Uh, and then install, we need to install the Prisma CLI. To do that, um, we're just going to install it globally. So just type in npm install dash g prisma and that's going to install prisma globally if you have an old version of the prisma cli you may want to make sure that you're upgraded to the latest version okay so that just completed so that's good um, so now we're kind of set up from a package perspective so now let's kind of like dive into um, the directory structure here so we can get an understanding of what's essentially going on. So package.json, obviously that's all our dependencies. Um, tsconfig, that's our TypeScript config. I wouldn't recommend messing with anything there. Go ahead and open up the Prisma folder. Um, and I'll remove that integrated directory. And then um, click on the data model.prisma. Um, so this is the data model that's required for the Prisma Nexus plugin. If we go back to our presentation, that's the first step of the workflow, is you first define the Prisma data model. 
Um, so it's done right here. Then I'll open up the prisma.yaml file. This prisma.yaml file, essentially when you type in prisma deploy, it's essentially looking at this file to understand what it needs to do. Um, so your endpoint is like a, like a GraphQL endpoint that you would use. The data model is location that your data model exists, which is what we had just looked at. Um, generate is like the directory of where the contents are auto-generated to for like the auto-crud stuff and types. And then hooks are like anything that happens after um, everything is generated. Um, so in this case, it's going to run uh, Prisma Generate and MPX Nexus Prisma Generate, which if you remember from our presentation, that's essentially what's happening in the second step here is it runs Nexus Prisma Generate. Um, the seed, uh, go ahead and comment out. We don't need this. Um, the idea around seed is that after your um, after this is deployed, it can like manually run some sort of uh, script to like input data into your GraphQL server. We're not going to need that here, so just go ahead and omit that. And go ahead and remove that seed.ts file. We don't need that. <coughs> um, so now go to the src directory. And there's two files of, of use here. There's the types folder, which really right now it's just finding context. And I'm not going to mess with it, um, but if you wanted to add like different data sources or anything like that, you could add them here for type safety. Um, and then you can go to the index folder, which is really the meat of the uh, meat of the actual application. So this is where all the Nexus code resides. Um, this, if you remember from the presentation, there's a snippet of some Nexus code. This is essentially this right here. Um, you're basically defining your resolvers and schema in the same place. Um, they actually have some good examples here, of like like this query field where um, they've got um, some like. Um, they've got a field here for feed and it has a resolve function here. Um, and then I think, yeah, this is a good example here where um, this post query has um, an, an argument of search string and it's defined right here as a string. So you don't have that schema that you had before with the old workflow. Instead, it's just defined right here. And then you can reference it right in your resolver here. Um, so if you scroll down, you can see like um, creating the schema, you use a function called make Prisma schema and you define all the types that you define up above here. So like the mutation and the query, um, they're just basically listed out right here. Um, there's some Prisma stuff. Um, this is all just boilerplate, so I would just recommend leaving it as is for now. And then we get, finally we get to the bottom where it's like the Apollo server stuff. And if you've ever dealt with Apollo before, um, there's not much of a delta. You're just passing in schema just like, as you would with, with a non-Prisma Nexus workflow. And uh, you just add Prisma to your context. And so it can be accessed in the resolvers. <laughs> um, so for our example, let's go ahead and um, blow a lot of this away because we're going to do our own. Um, so go ahead and just start deleting this. Um, Just blow all this away. Okay. So now we've got a boilerplate index.ts file. Go ahead and save that. Um, now go back up to the data model.prisma file. And we're going to essentially define our own data model. So go ahead and blow this away. Um, what we're going to do for this example is we're going to do like an employee and employer model where an employer can have multiple employees and then an employee can have a single employer. So it has a sort of one-to-many relationship. I, I feel like that's it's simple enough um, to ex illustrate a lot of uh, functionality within this example. So um, you define a, a type here by just typing in type and then the name. So this is going to be type employee. We're going to open this up and it's going to have the de facto ID variable. And it's going to be of GraphQL type ID, all uppercase, and we're going to make this a required field by putting an exclamation point here. Um, then we're going to use a primitive called at ID, and it just tells uh, Prisma and GraphQL that this is 
indeed an ID. Um, Prisma is also able to auto generate the ID if you don't using this primitive if you don't pass it in. Um, next, we're just going to name a few properties. I'm going to do name of type string, and I'm going to make this required. And then I'll do the same thing with email. Um, and then I'm, that's also going to be required. Then I'm going to do a photo URL. And uh, I'm going to make this a type string, but I'm not going to make it required. Um, then I'm going to do two other things. Um, there's a nice thing that Prisma has with this created at field. Um, I can make this of type date time and uh, I can make it required but I can use this primitive here called created at and this is basically it uses the um, system generated create at field um, so I don't have to like manually declare it um, in like the queries and mutations. Same thing with updated at this is we're going to use the updated at primitive uh, and I'm going to do one more thing called status or two more things to just say one more called status it's going to be of type boolean and I'm going to use a default default primitive and I'm going to say default primitive parentheses value is true so what this is is that if I don't define a status in like a new employee um, it'll default to a true value. Um, if you don't specify this, it'll just do null. So I, I think true is a better alternative for this case. Um, next, I'm going to do the type employer. Employer. And I'm going to open that up. It's going to have a type of ID just like the other one above. And it's going to be required with the ID primitive. And then this is going to be, um, I'm going to have a name, type string. I'm going to make this required. Same thing with the email. Uh, and um, I'll do photo URL as well, but this will not be required. And I'm going to do the created at and updated at as well. So I'm just going to copy um, that down here. And um, I won't have a status for this one. Uh, so now I want to link these two together. So you do that by just, you know, in, in one type, this is going to be um, one employee to one, or an yeah, employee to one employer. So you just type in uh, employer, and I properties I do lowercase, but types I do uppercase. So this is just going to be uppercase employer. And then on the employer side, it's going to be one employer to many employees. Um, so the way that you do that is you do uh, lowercase employee property and then I'll do an array of employees, uh, sorry, employee. I'm actually going to make this employee plural um, just to help be a little bit more declarative in that one and many approach. So I can go ahead and save that. And now that the scheme is defined, I'm ready to deploy this. Um, so I'm going to open up my toggle, my integrated terminal. And I'm going to run, um, um, first of all, make sure you're, you're in the right directory, um, your base directory, and type in Prisma deploy. And this is going to give me a prompt. And it's going to give me several options. For this example, I'm going to do the demo server in the MySQL database. And hit enter. And this should run. Oh, it asks you for what region. And I'm just going to do the US region. And name, um, I'll use like Macboy Digital Example. But you can name it whatever you want. And I just use the default for name of your stage. And now it's going to go ahead and execute. This is going to run, and it's going to run all those commands that we saw in the prisma.yaml file and auto generate all of our stuff. And now it says that this is generated, so um, it should be ready to go. Let me just take a look at this prisma.yaml file, and you can see here that the URL endpoint is now defined here. So this is really handy. So anytime you want to update your data model, you just come into here and you update it. 
and then run prisma deploy and the prisma.yaml file will pick up this URL and it'll automatically um, update your um, CRUD functionality based on you know whatever you put in here. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we will um, basically use the Nexus uh, framework to basically uh, customize any sort of parameters that we want. Um, but um, we're going to go ahead and cut off this video and I'll, I'll do that in the next video. Um, so I'll see you in the next video.